Yo, what's happening everybody? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. This is the Canon EOS Rebel T8i and boy, have they come far with this line of cameras. I can sit here right now and confidently say that I learned like 85% of what I know right now on the T3i like way back in the day. And I know that I'm in really good company when I make a statement like that. The Rebel cameras were a lot of people's like icebreaker camera that they learned photography on. And past like the first model or two, a lot of people's introduction to recording video on an interchangeable lens camera. Hey, that's the camp I belongs to as well. Which actually makes this next point like even more sad. The T8i might literally be the last in the Rebel line of cameras. I don't know if we're going to get a T9i. This is all speculation by the way, none of this is official. My brain is sort of going in that direction because Canon has officially announced that their flagship line of cameras, the 1DX line, officially stopped production. They're saving all of those production and manufacturing resources for their new mirrorless line of cameras, which Canon has made perfectly clear to us is going to be the future of their product base. Considering that, I wouldn't really be surprised if they halted the production of the Rebel line as well. The Rebel is like way at the other end of the professional consumer line. But also now that I think about it, for that exact reason, it might actually stay in production longer than any other DSLR. So I'd be kind of curious to see the outcome of that. Anyways, I'm having these types of thoughts because over the last couple of days, I've been shooting on the Canon EOS R10. And honestly, if we hear that the Rebel line does cease production, this thing might be the single solitary reason why. I'm pretty much of the mindset right now that this EOS R10 is just like the mirrorless Rebel. It makes total sense. A lot of other Canon DSLR bodies have had their corresponding mirrorless version released in the past year or so. And I think the time has finally come that the Rebel has met its mirrorless cousin. So for this video, I'll do a brief physical overview of the EOS R10, sort of talk about what's going on specs wise, talk about what's going on on the outside, the inside, show you some 4K video from this thing, some sample stills, and also talk about just what this thing can and can't do. Because yes, this is a new flashy Canon mirrorless camera, but after all, it is still an entry level camera at the end of the day, and it's going to be limited in some of those ways. Really the purpose of this video I kind of want to see how similar the learning experience on the R10 would be maybe compared to the entry-level beginner-ish experience that a lot of us were used to with the Rebel. So will the EOS R10 lead to the Canon Rebel's demise? I think it's way too early to say that, but what we can do is draw a couple parallels between these two cameras. The Canon Rebel in really any iteration is an affordable, very beginner friendly, interchangeable lens camera with cropped APS-C sized sensor. What really made the Rebel camera so amazing though was that they always borrowed a good amount of features or tech from a much more professional Canon camera body out at its time while still maintaining this awesome small form factor and simplicity of use. And absolutely every one of those things applies to the R10. Super small body, button layout and menus tailored for beginner shooters, still interchangeable lenses of course, although if you looked at this thing you might think it was a point and shoot. Same APS-C crop sensor and like I said on the inside some great tricks it borrows from the much more professional mirrorless bodies, the EOS R, the R5, the R6. But one major difference between this and the Rebel system, of course, is the mirrorless system used on the R10 as compared to, of course, the mirrored DSLR system on the Rebel line. And shocker, I think it's going to be the mirrorless aspect of the R10 that's just going to give it that extra potential for greatness and also feeds into some of the other reasons you would want to choose this as an entry level option. Option. So let's chat about some of those. So starting from outside in, EOS R10, super duper small form factor, much smaller than say the R5 I have next to it right here, or even the already pretty small Rebel. This can be great for beginners for the sheer reason that it's much more portable this way, and you're going to be shooting it more for that reason, which is actually massive for a beginner. Though I've heard so many times that people don't like shooting on a body this tiny because it's just hard to operate. If your hands are even like 
like a little bit on the large side, I could totally see your problem there. The mirrorless body type is just going to make everything smaller. It's going to make the camera body smaller, the lenses smaller, it's going to make everything more lightweight, and from what we've been led to believe, cheaper too, with an asterisk on cheaper. That's going to make the R10 a much more friendlier option for somebody just starting out. Although admittedly, we are just now starting to see some of those more cheaply manufactured RF lenses started to roll out before, there really were not a lot of options for lenses that had a similar price bracket to this body. Now people like entering this circle have a lot more affordable options for that. Okay, moving on to more body stuff, let's talk about button layout. So even considering the lack of real estate and overall like simple goal of this camera, you still have access to a lot of the stuff you would need via physical buttons on the body. A good mode dial right here with the video mode on that, it's not on the on off switch, which I don't typically like, but it does lack some physical buttons that you might have wanted like white balance, which you will be resorting to the menus and Q menu for. Okay, the last couple physical notes I have on this camera, let's talk about battery and media. The EOS R10 takes a slightly smaller LPE17 battery. These are currently seen in the last two or so Rebel models, and these are certainly going to give you much less juice than the more common LPE6 and now LPE6N and NH, but battery life is still totally fair for what this camera is doing. Another thing pretty common in an entry-level body, only one slot for media, and it shares the same little room as the battery. It's an SD card, of course, and it's UHS Type 2. Just from that, you're not really going to be getting any blazing fast video bit speeds or any super high burst shooting in stills mode. Remember though how I said the best parts about the Rebel line and this R10 are the things that they borrow from the more professional bodies that they're like cousins with? Well, this is absolutely one of those things, the fully articulating screen on the R10. I love this when they included this in the Rebel line and I love it on this thing. And this is another thing that I think is especially great for beginners because I know a lot of new photographers are still going to be using this LCD screen to compose and stuff and videographers too but that's a little bit different and if it can just articulate fully like front facing downwards upwards I just know that that's going to be something that's going to help a beginner get a shot that they might not have been able to achieve otherwise and much more applicable to now that articulating screen for video is going to be wonderful for like any vlogging front-facing stuff you're gonna be doing. And speaking of that, I just wanted to roll some 4K video I took from this guy to show you what that's looking like, and I'll let you see for yourself, obviously, but I think it looks pretty great. Again, talk about borrowing stuff from more professional Canon bodies. You're getting Canon's color science and video imaging right here in this thing that it does not look like there are a lot of compromises to the video capture here. It will take 4K video up to 30 frames per second using its whole 26 megapixel sensor, or 4K up to 60 frames per second, but in an even greater crop. So the camera is already giving you an APS-C size crop that basically doubles your focal length. So the 4K 60 sensor windowing, I'm guessing is going to use around 16 megapixels of that sensor. So that is a really, really awesome tool to give beginners, but say you're even a little bit experienced with more professional Canon camera bodies, you might look at that as a bit of a shortcoming. Here's one thing that performs pretty much just as good as professional Canon camera bodies, the dual pixel autofocus on the R10 works like a dream. It's snappy, it finds faces really well, it doesn't get confused really. Again, something that's going to help just like inspire way more confidence in a beginner photo or video shooter. Navigating through the R10's menus most of the time, it will look exactly the same as any other Canon camera menu and interface, but here and there you will encounter more of these like beginner friendly illustrated prompts. So if you are in manual, these really aren't going to come up. But we are used to seeing a lot of that like clear imagery and illustration in more entry level cameras. So you're definitely getting that in this thing. The stabilization is really excellent on this thing. And granted, it does have a lot less work to do than stabilizing a full frame image sensor just being the APS-C size. Again, it's just another thing that's going to help an amateur achieve images that they are proud of and just improve ease of use in general. The USR 
10 is a mirrorless Canon camera and features the mirrorless RF mount. And for a while, Canon was really only releasing professional like L-series RF lens mount glass. But now there are way better options for affordable, more efficiently manufactured RF mount lenses, bringing it right back in the ballpark of like this body's price tag. Two lenses that I think would pair spectacularly well with this camera are those fixed aperture RF super tellies. These are super affordable, super lightweight Canon super tellies. This setup right here is like not much more than $1,500 retail. It could literally rival like a $15,000 setup. And to me, that would be extremely exciting to hear as an entry level photographer with only $1,500 to spend. Surely there are going to be some major setbacks if you butted this up with a more professional Canon mirrorless. A lot of the entry level and consumer gear like this that Canon makes, and this isn't just Canon either, can sometimes be outsourced to satellite plants where they make some pieces of gear in a more cost efficient way that can really drive down the price. But I was totally wrong. The EOS R10 body is made in the Japan factory and I really don't get that cheap impression from any other area of this camera. I just kind of listened to that shutter sound and maybe judged it a little too quickly. But that is usually something I'm taking into consideration when I'm talking about like the shelf life of a camera. If it's got like a plasticky build, the button response isn't feeling good, they're maybe not feeling like well seated into the body. These are all things that I've learned are going to make it a lot less likely to stand that trial of time. So whether it was for photography or videography or both, if you cut your teeth on, by the way, I, I hate that saying, I mean, I'm never saying that again. If you learned on a Canon Rebel camera, let me know in the comment section because I think that could actually be a really cool discussion to have. And then also, we can talk about whether the EOS R10 is going to be the Rebel killer. No, I'm kidding. I honestly hope that both of these cameras can peacefully co-inhabit the entry level camera space. This ties back into the whole thing of like the best camera that you have is the one that stays with you all the time. And that piece of advice is especially helpful to beginners. Probably the most crucial piece of advice I have for photo or video people starting out. Just get out there and shoot. If that's the EOS Rebel for you, or if that's the EOS R10 for you, or if even that's your cell phone for you, shoot on whatever you're having the most fun with and whatever is improving your skills. So ditch the cell phone. All right, everybody, that is pretty much going to do it on this video talking about the EOS R10 drawing a couple of parallels while trying not to be biased and nostalgic about the EOS Rebel. So if you have any questions, comments, or insights about the R10, drop them in the comment section. And also, if you have a Canon EOS Rebel story, I think that would be really fun to share a couple of those in the comment section too. Also, if you happen to like this video, hit it with that little thumbs up button down there to let me know you liked it. It'll also let YouTube know you liked this video and get it mixed up in the old algorithm. If you didn't do any of that stuff, you could subscribe to the channel. I don't know if you noticed, we are insanely close to that 100,000 subscriber milestone. Every single sub helps, so go ahead and do that if you haven't already. If you have, mwah, chef's kiss, you can take it a step further by hitting that little bell button that's next to the subscribe button. That will keep you in the loop whenever we post new content. So, people, Rebel Alliance or Galactic Empire? Let me know in the comments section and we'll see you in the next one.